I know what is about uh, bridge, which is uh, about to collapse soon, uh, with uh, 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 defect uh, tensing cables. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, I, I think, a good thing that the MSA uh, program has uh, devoted uh, money uh, to this issue of uh, surveillance and monitoring of uh, uh, infrastructure assets. Uh, I will start with uh, one uh, uh, big question. Uh, what is obsolescence? Mm -hmm. I will be a bit provocative, but uh, to, to, I would say to, to, to massage uh, your mindset, I will give you uh, two kinds of uh, obsolescence. Obsolescence by design and obsolescence by negligence. What I mean by uh, uh, obsolescence by design. Mm. Every product you may have today. This is a product designed to be obsolete a uh, few days after the end of a guarantee period. Sorry for our Chinese colleagues, it's a Huawei. But uh, I moved from Samsung to Huawei because uh, uh, during uh, the guarantee period, uh, I had a problem of a battery of uh, my Samsung. And uh, I went to uh, Samsung shop and, and they said, ah, no, sorry, we can't guarantee your smartphone because there is a little crack on your skin and uh, the guarantee do not apply, does not apply to, uh, mm, to smartphones with a crack on the, on the screen. So I moved to Huawei, but I know that this uh, smartphone will be obsolete a uh, few days after the end of a guarantee period. It's by design and most products are mm, designed to uh, last only for the duration guaranteed by law. You have a second kind of obsolescence, which I call obsolescence by negligence. And uh, the prototype of uh, obsolescence of, uh, by negligence is uh, the bridge of uh, Genoa. Hmm? You build an infrastructure, no maintenance, and you wait for the final collapse. And it's the way most infrastructure are managed in majority, maybe not in Europe, but uh, it's the way uh, usually uh, transport infrastructure are managed today. What about infrastructure? I took uh, some figures coming from a report made recently by uh, consultancy McKinsey about uh, the market for infrastructure uh, worldwide. They estimate that uh, uh, infrastructure uh, represents 4% of uh, worldwide GDP. It's enormous, but it's about new uh, infrastructure spending, mainly. Uh, those figures are not uh, important. What you have to keep in mind that it's a huge market. Uh, you have almost one third of infrastructure made in developed countries and two thirds made in developing countries today. When you take, I uh, will say, a simple rule uh, of thumb about investment and maintenance, if you want to keep, to keep uh, uh, one asset not obsolete, to keep it operational, you have to invest more, more, more or less uh, the same amount, that the amount of amortization. So if you have an infrastructure intended design to last one century, you have to invest in principle 1% per year to maintain this infrastructure. If you have one infrastructure designed to last 40 years, you should invest 2.5% per year. So if you have a constant portfolio of infrastructure, you should in principle, ideally, invest as much in repair and invest in maintenance as in new investment. Do you agree with this the rule? And it's not the case nowhere in the world. So it's why uh, there is an aging uh, of infrastructure and a decay of infrastructure, mainly uh, in the US and mainly in Europe. 
So because the uh, first biggest infrastructures were built in the US and uh, uh, in Germany, and both countries will have a biggest problem soon because they do underinvest in the maintenance and the repair of those infrastructures. And uh, surveillance and monitoring of uh, infrastructure assets are part of this picture. And you are here because it's the final workshop. And then you will be no longer paid by MSCA or by Infrasa or by your employer. Uh, so uh, what is next for you? So my message is to the 12 ESRs, you have decisions to take. Some of you have already taken decisions, have uh, accepted uh, an employment uh, in the industry. So you could uh, perform uh, further research, hmm? apply for a second uh, Marie Curie Estososka uh, grant, or to uh, be uh, in a research organization competing for a grant uh, under Horizon Europe. So you had a, a presentation made by uh, my colleague uh, uh, this morning, uh, uh, Athena, uh, about uh, what will be uh, proposed uh, soon uh, under Horizon Europe. You can uh, embrace an academic career, hmm? but how many posts hmm, could you find in your domain, uh, in your country or in Europe? I think uh, there are not so numerous uh, places in universities uh, on uh, your specific uh, domain, so the competition will be very, very high. Uh, you can find employment in the industry, so it's already done. I think it's easy because the, uh, given your background, given your research, uh, you are worth something and uh, you can find easily uh, a job in the industry. But is it really what you want? And uh, would you do uh, what you expect in the industry all along your career or not? So it's a still an open issue. And there is a possibility to create a, a startup. And this depends on what you have done before. If you consider that you have made something innovating, that this innovation is worth something, that it can bring value to clients, to customers, to, to society at large, then uh, what do you want to do with in innovation? To leave it to others to develop it? Or to develop it yourself? And my advice to you is that based on we say, my experience and my knowledge, my knowledge, nobody is better placed than you to develop your innovation and to make it happen. Because otherwise, hmm, if you try to sell it, maybe nobody will want to buy it because they would not understand the value, they would not understand the potential of your innovation. And if by chance, I would say, someone will buy, buy your innovation, uh, I would say there is a high probability, 90%, that this buyer will kill your innovation. So they will keep your know-how, uh, your uh, IPRs, your patent, if any, and they will keep it under lock, uh, locked in a drawer, uh, so that it will be, can be never used by a competitor. And there is the biggest issue uh, in Europe today is that uh, through uh, research uh, subsidized by public money, we are piling up knowledge and very few of this knowledge is used for commercial and industrial applications. And this is for you a decision to think about today. Hmm? Because uh, in, once you have embraced a trajectory, it's very difficult to move out of this trajectory. So maybe uh, if you have this idea to create a startup now and you are maybe not ready for family reasons or for financial reasons, or maybe you want to acquire some knowledge in the industry, but you have to keep that in mind and to be ready uh, when 
uh, your idea of business is mature enough. So it was uh, one question asked by Akim, and uh, so I answer this uh, question. <laughs> Innovation, what is it? Because we uh, speak uh, of uh, innovation everywhere. You cannot find a speech made by a politician when the term innovation is not in the speech. Because if you don't use the term innovation, you are an has-been. Mm? So uh, the term is used and abused. So there is at least one, I would say, internationally recognized definition uh, uh, for innovation, uh, and this definition is in a document called uh, uh, the OECD Oslo Manual, uh, and which is so, so agreed amongst all EC OECD members. And uh, the OECD uh, has defined now three kinds of uh, innovation: mm, product innovation, process innovation, which is very important for services. Uh, marketing innovation, so basically new business models like Facebook or Google, and organizational innovation. And if you want to be very innovative, you have to be innovative in all these domains. Uh, and uh, I'm working for uh, director, uh, um, director General in the Commission, which is in charge of the industry, of the economy, and our I would say objective is uh, to make uh, the European industry more innovative. That means creating jobs and products in Europe. And for us, innovation needs to be used and spread. So it has to be commercialized. As long as you don't have a first, I would say, free uh, customer, you don't have an innovation. Innovation is called TL9 in your uh, jargon, in the TRL uh, scale, uh, uh, so in the TRL ladder. Uh, and I, when I say commercialize, you should not sell your product to your friend or to uh, someone you know. You need someone you don't know, which is willing to buy and make sure that uh, your product or service is used by your customer. And then, if uh, this customer is happy with your innovation, your innovation will spread. And then you have another issue, which is to scale up, but I will discuss this later on. So this is the situation of, uh, of the EU compared to the other, I would say, economic competitors in the world. Um, Europe is lagging behind um, the US, China, uh, China today, uh, Japan and Korea about uh, investment in research. Uh, so, we are, I think, uh, number one in terms of uh, research. Well, so in terms of applications and in terms of uh, excellent research, but in terms of uh, innovations, um, we are lagging behind, and uh, mainly because uh, uh, EU companies are not investing enough in R and D. So. Uh, 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 I would say private R&D represents 1.3% of GDP in the EU, maybe less uh, with uh, Brexit after the departure of uh, the UK, compared to 2% in the US, 26 in Japan, and 3.3% uh, in North Korea. Uh, in the South Korea, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you are not asleep. <laughs> And uh, you are part of a one third of the high quality scientific publications. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you, you should not be a part of the MSCA. I made this uh, table for you, especially for you, because uh, I could not find these figures myself in uh, the publications made by the European Commission. It's uh, the volume of money injected in R&D by the EU. And uh, you have to take in, into account uh, all programs related to, I would say, research in general. So you have certainly uh, the framework program, so called Horizon 2020 uh, in the years 14 to 20. And now it's called Horizon Europe uh, for the years 21 to 27. And it was called 
simply framework program one, two, three, four, five, seven before, eight became Horizon 2020, and nine uh, became Horizon Europe. So it's a huge amount of money. Um, uh, so we secured for the last, uh, we could MFF uh, fi uh, financial uh, period, multi annual uh, financial framework. I think it's a the real acronym of MFF. Uh, 79 billion euros uh, euro, uh, up to now, and we are ambitioning uh, uh, 100 uh, billion uh, for the next seven years, but this is not a uh, Guaranteed because there's still under discussions between uh, the uh, EU Council, so the, the Council of uh, Ministers, and um, the EU Parliament. But uh, you have to add uh, other programs uh, Digital Europe, 9.2 uh, billion. Uh, the EU space programs, do you have a lasers? Yes. Uh, the EU space programs, so basically Galileo and Copernicus. I can give you more details if you want afterwards uh, in the Q&As. Uh, EDF, what does it mean, EDF? By not Electricité de France, huh? <laughs> what does it mean? Eh? Ah, defense. defense, yes. So, E for... E excellent. Uh, thank you, Afina. <laughs> But uh, she works for <laughs> EU agency, so <laughs> so uh, we are investing. Um, so we are likely to invest 13 billion for the defense programs, and uh, out of this 13 billion, one third should be devoted to research. Maybe not for startups, maybe not for scale-ups, but research in uh, in the industry. You have the program uh, ITER. You know uh, ITER? No, no. Huh? Yeah, it's about uh, fusion of uh, the atoms of uh, hydrogen, and uh, there is a, uh, an infrastructure uh, in Cardarache in the south of France, and it's a national program f funded by uh, many countries, the US, Canada, Japan, certainly China, and the EU, and the EU is uh, giving uh, a lot of money to this project, which is costing uh, dozens of billions of... Uh, hmm? uh, dollars or euros, euros because it is, it is placed in, in the EU. It's like, I would say, the uh, space uh, stations, the ISS, uh, but it's for physicists uh, on the ground. Uh, it's, uh, well, I should not say this because the commission is uh, investing into this project, but uh, it's uh, the long, long, long future uh, of uh, energy if uh, one day uh, it will uh, work. Uh, then you have uh, the Connecting Europe Facility Digital, uh, which was called uh, previously uh, the Connecting Europe Facility uh, Telecom. It's about uh, funding transnational uh, telecom networks, and so connections between um, uh, member states or uh, isolated uh, countries, Malta, uh, islands, uh, Cyprus, for example. And uh, you have also, you may know or you may not know that uh, the European Commission itself is doing research. We have researchers employed by the European Commission uh, within the Joint Research Center, the GRC, and the GRC has several centers uh, all over Europe, and the main one is based in Nice, in Italy. And uh, the GRC is doing research funded by uh, the framework program, but also under Euratom for nuclear research. Mm -hmm. So you can be, uh, you can apply uh, also for uh, a postdoc at uh, the Joint Research Center. You have a contract employment for three years. Uh, you are paid maybe a little bit more than uh, MSCA. It's very competitive, but it's limited to certain uh, domains. So if you want to continue research, uh, it's an additional uh, opportunity for you. So don't remember those figures. What is important to understand is that um, Europe has never put so much money into research and innovation. Because uh, since 2014, after research, if you don't add and innovation, you have a problem in the, in the European Commission because it's part of a standard language. 
research is should be followed by innovation, otherwise you are fired. Uh, why? Uh, and I will explain uh, this afterwards. But uh, so we are almost adding 50% per year. It's enormous. And uh, what is more important is that we want to uh, fund, subsidize startups and scale-ups through uh, the EIT, which is the European Institute uh, of uh, Innovation and Technology, which is based in Budapest, in Hungary. Uh, and uh, this EU body is uh, funding, I would say, partnerships, uh, pri public-private partnerships between the industry, research, and education. And uh, those partnerships are helping startups, innovators, to develop their products. There are currently uh, eight partnerships of that kind, and uh, we envisage more partnerships in the future. If you want more information about this, I can give you more information uh, afterwards. But uh, uh, the numbers here, 2.4 billion. Uh, then you have 4.3 billion, uh, which has been invested by uh, the SME instrument, which was followed soon by the EIC pilot, the precursor to the EIC, and EIC stands for European Innovation Council. And uh, this is an instrument, uh, I would say, uh, wanted by uh, Commissioner Moedash, a former commissioner for research, uh, because uh, he uh, realized that, uh, I think he was not alone, but uh, we uh, have a problem in Europe about scallops, not startups, but scallops. Uh, in, in the EU 28, we create more startups than the US. Hmm? Uh, and certainly more startups than China, even. But we have much less uh, unicorns. We have much less, I would say, success stories than uh, our competitors. Why? Many reasons. We can discuss this uh, later if you want. And here you have uh, new figures for startups and scale-ups. If you want to create your startups, you have to be aware of these uh, figures because it can give you a flavor of, uh, I would say, uh, the volume of money injected and uh, you can get part of it if you are lucky and uh, ambitious and uh, smart. EIT, sorry. E EIT, so uh, the budget is slightly increased by uh, 600 million, but there is a huge jump through the creation of the EIC with 10 billion, uh, which will be, uh, uh, I would say, uh, spent through uh, grants uh, and or through uh, what is called uh, blended finance. So it's a jargon that uh, if you uh, create your startup, you will be uh, soon familiar with that jargon. Blended finance is a mixture of uh, grants uh, and uh, equity and or um, equity related uh, loans. So financial instruments, which are prepared basically by uh, the European Investment Bank and the European Investment Bank will uh, work with financial intermediaries in order to uh, give products of that kind to uh, startups uh, which will be selected and identified uh, with a huge potential for scale up. So, uh, I, I, I didn't make the, cal the calculation, but you have uh, basically seven, almost seven uh, billion here, and you have, you see, 13, so it's uh, almost a doubling of the money which will be uh, injected by the EU into startups and scale-ups. Multiply by two for the next seven years. This is the only thing you should remember from this presentation, or at least for, from this slide. Okay? So, um, th these are standard uh, slides, uh, that uh, you will see uh, the same slides when uh, Afina <laughs> presented, but uh, we are digging into the same <laughs> source of, uh, of slides. 
Um, uh, we have so novelties in Eurozone, uh, Europe, the new framework program for research and innovation. I should not, uh, I should not forgive uh, innovation. So with the European Innovation Council, I mentioned earlier, uh, you will have uh, what what we call the, the missions uh, in order to, uh, I would say, uh, put more emphasis uh, on uh, impact and outcome of the classical goals uh, to make sure that they will, uh, I would say, contribute to solutions uh to um, uh, uh sd so the sustainable and development goals or challenges uh so you have a uh, uh, this is ambition to strengthen international cooperation so we have a, here an example of uh, the international cooperation through the presence of uh, the participation of many uh, um, esrs from third countries uh, so this is not important, so open science, everything should be made publicly available, but uh, it's not always possible, uh, we can discuss this later if you want. Uh, this is not important for you, uh, the partnerships, uh, and uh, they want to um, encourage participation and uh, to uh, promote excellent science, and uh, which is basically the European Research uh, Council, which is uh, funding uh, I would say the best of the cream of a cream of a scientist in, in Europe. Mm, so you have seen these slides already. Uh, so you you see here again the 13.5 uh, billion for uh, innovative Europe. So innovative Europe is called uh, in our jargon pillar three. Uh, I spoke of 13 billion, so you have half a billion in addition, and this half billion in addition is for ecosystems, uh, innovative ecosystems. Okay, but uh, this money will not give you, uh, will not um, land uh, into the pockets of uh, startups, uh, only uh, research uh, organizations which are, I would say, uh, nurturing uh, innovation. Uh, and uh, you, you have also, uh, uh, here, uh, uh, Euratom uh, Research Program 2.4. This slides, uh, this slide uh, has been shown to you uh, by uh, Athena. So it's the structure of uh, uh, Horizon Europe with three uh, pillars. You you are today here at uh, MSCA, and the issue is uh, whether you can. Uh, uh, live on other sources hmm? and my advice to you would be to go somewhere here or somewhere here so eic or eit you know if you want to uh, create a startup so hmm, you will uh, follow up soon so if uh, i uh, give uh, details on this slide uh, we spoke of emissions partnerships here you have EIC and uh, you have to be uh, uh, somewhere. In the past, we had only grants only to uh, SMEs through applications, uh, interviews, and uh, you had uh, at SME uh, phase one, uh, uh, just a check uh, without conditions of uh, 50,000 and uh, up to, and then uh, if you were uh, even more successful, you could get a grant from uh, half a million to I remember 2.5 million. And with the uh, EIC, the novelty is that um, the Commission will be um, uh, legally enabled to uh, give uh, money to uh, larger uh, companies, uh, what uh, we call uh, in our jargon uh, uh, mid caps, which do not meet the conditions uh, to be qualified as uh, an SME, but uh, which could be. Uh, uh, sorry? I will uh, speed up, speed up, speed up. So sorry, U Europe is making a, a big progress uh, innovation status, but not enough. You have uh, here some figures uh, given by the uh, new uh, EIC about uh, uh, fundraising uh, in uh, Europe. Uh, I think th these uh, uh, figures are a bit over overstated. 
basically you have to keep in mind that uh, the difference between the US and Europe is uh, one to 10. So uh, in, in the US, you have about 60 to 80 uh, billion uh, venture capital uh, per year. Uh, it's one tenth uh, in Europe. So this is the order of magnitude. But this may change, uh, and we hope it will change. Uh, talent is the most important factor because uh, talent is key. Uh, developers attract capital and not the other way around. So if you have a good idea, if, if you have talents, the, so money will come to you. So sometimes startups are spending too much time uh, running after money. Uh, if you are good at communication, if you are good and you are uh, confident in uh, the strength of your innovation, the money should come. Research are the key for having developers. Uh, so there is a correlation between researchers and developers, meaning developers, mm, startups, uh, new businesses. Uh, this is the role of my uh, DG uh, in uh, innovation and industrial policy. I will uh, jump it. Uh, but uh, what uh, we are responsible for the definition of uh, strategic value chains. What are strategic value chains? It's, uh, I would say, a symbolic uh, qualification uh, for uh, part of the industry. Oi, oi. I, I cut. Innovation, tac, tac. So you have a long definition about uh, value chain, but basically is to find uh, a collaboration between uh, companies uh, about um, uh, areas of uh, common research. Uh, uh, why? in order to circumvent, kind of circumvent, uh, stated rules. Uh, you know that uh, uh, the commission is responsible for uh, competition law and uh, under commission law and under EU commission law, you should not give uh, uh, undue subsidies to companies, uh, even in uh, research uh, and innovation. And if, he, if um, the project is too close to market, usually the DG competition uh, refuses to give uh, its green light for such projects, except in what we call an uh, uh, important project of common uh, interest, uh, IPCIs, and um, uh, strategic value chains are kind of ways to, uh, to identify areas where we need IPCIs. And IPCIs basically uh, um, are I would say collaboration between member states to allocate uh, money for subsidies to companies. So on top of all the programs of the EU, you have also programs of member states giving money to startups or uh, I would say older uh, companies in areas. And I will give you uh, uh, what has been uh, identified as uh, strategic value chains. And here on this table, you have the two IPCIs already approved by the Commission. You have here the date of approval of the Commission. You have here the amount of money which is green lighted by the Commission and which we spend by those countries to their companies into in these domains, microelectronics, batteries. And we have uh, uh, in the pipeline uh, IPCIs. Uh, I would say, ready to be uh, notified to the Commission on high performance computing, uh, hydrogen, a second IPCI on batteries, and uh, we may have, because these are, uh, I would say, considered as uh, strategic value chains by the Commission. Uh, so the, what's called the connected clean automated vehicles, uh, low carbon industry, smart health, uh, IoT, Internet of Things, so the industrial part of uh, uh, IoT and cybersecurity. Uh, not that uh, you can be part of uh, IoT because uh, uh, without IoT, it's difficult to monitor infrastructure today. So you will be you will use in any way uh, IoT uh, sensors and uh, equipment. Thank you for your attention. So maybe uh, sorry for having uh, um, spent too much time, too much of my time. But uh, now I want uh, to have a feedback from you about uh, uh, your position vis-a-vis -vis your uh, innovation. 
Remember what I said, nobody else than you will develop your innovation and sell it. So if you want to make a success, only you can do it. And uh, if uh, uh, you have uh, a very good idea, uh, you may be supported by the Open Commission through either the EIC or the EIT. And remember one thing, uh, whether you are in a company or whether you are in a public administration or in a university, you can be moved from your post within a blink of an eye. Hmm? Nobody is secure in, in his position. If you are the boss or part of a management, uh, and if you have an innovator in a startups, it will be difficult to uh, get rid of you. And uh, uh, you can uh, also uh, observe what happens in France with uh, yellow jackets uh, about the future of pensions. There is no guarantee that you will get a pension. No, no, but uh, even if you, uh, if you work uh, for your whole life in v it's not guaranteed that you will get a pension, especially if you have an initial career. Uh, so if uh, you want to secure your future, so if uh, you are part of a, a company you, you created or you co-created, uh, you are, I would say, uh, uh, better off, you are, I would say, uh, uh, in a safer position. So my advice to you is, uh, Think about starting up uh, a business. Join forces. If uh, you are, uh, if your, I would say, uh, if your application of your research is not uh, self-sufficient or self-sustaining, uh, uh, find partners mm, to uh, uh, offer, a, a, I would say, a, a viable uh, product. Um, the market is enormous, as I told you. Uh, and you will create this market because you have to not, not only start up and, sp and uh, scale up, but you have also to speak up. Because uh, when you have an accident like uh, the collapse of the bridge of Genoa, you have to speak up and to say, there are solutions which could have prevented this catastrophe. Mm? And it's criminal not uh, to install a surveillance mechanism of infrastructure. It's true of bridges. It's true of nuclear power stations. It's true of uh, all infrastructure uh, in Europe. And my advice to you is to uh, develop your business not in your home country, but in Europe. Why? Because the money is here. Second, because the market is here. And I'm sure uh, because of many reasons that, the Euro that Europe will spend more on maintenance and repair of uh, infrastructure than the US. Hmm? So the market is here. Maybe it will be China in a few years, huh? because uh, you, uh, infrastructure will be aging soon in China, but today it's in Europe. So you have a money, you have a market, you have a network, it's up to you to play. Thank you, Olivier. So, Maybe we can take one comment or yes, Bartek. I have a, I have a general question to, to both of you, the presenters from presenters from today. You show that there are many possibilities, but because there are so many, it's kind of difficult to find which possibility could fit us or which which one we could fit in. What is the best way of understanding these programs, tracking the programs, and so on? So my, my, advice to you, my advice to you is first go for the dissemination, the exploitation booster. You need to see what are what is the value of what you have of your results. Then in that service you can have they can also help you to make a, a business plan. So you can have this information already from uh, from us, from, uh, from from this booster, and then you can see. Then of course, yes, the the next stage maybe is a little bit more difficult. Uh, maybe you can go to the national contact points where they know the programs and they can advise you there. Um, and uh, of course, follow all the information in the sites. Uh, unfortunately, the funding and tenders portal 
also includes all the work programs and you need to study, you need to look for the information and the information will not come to you. You need to go to that. I don't know if uh, Olivier wants to say something. Uh. Yeah, my advice to you is uh, don't rely on others, rely on yourself and uh, uh, have with you a notebook, a cahier, where you note when you have an idea, you, you, you know, you write down your idea. When you have a discussion with uh, another researcher or with a, with a CEO of a company, with a potential client, note everything you have noticed and you will build up uh, in this notebook, uh, a narrative, a business, a possible business project. You will uh, refine your ideas. You will adapt your application to uh, uh, what could be a, a viable uh, product. So this is my first, first advice um, to you. The second is uh, money will come if you have uh, I would say a good narrative and for this good narrative you have to prepare it to nurture it through this exercise it's a it's a mental exercise uh, and then you can uh, be I would say equipped and armed to uh, mm, attract and uh, uh, to attract uh, in, in investors and or to attract uh, public money uh, you could uh, in first instance, uh, contact the EIT and or the EIT, so the EIT community, uh, and only a second, in the second time, uh, look whether the EIC could help you. Uh, but you you should uh, gather uh, advice and uh, messages from all possible sources. It's good, uh, and then you will be guided to uh, I would say the most appropriate. Uh, instrument and uh, keep uh, I will say all possibilities uh, open and even if you fail today it's, it doesn't mean that you will fail tomorrow okay no just two small comments first one look east not west the US are way behind us it's not the reference anymore in particular in infrastructure okay that would be extremely misleading if we take the US as a reference look to China this is uh, the world leader in bridge engineering for 20 years now second remark startups are fine but the success rate is very low and it's mostly a frustration for the young people they, uh, you know, for the young startups they see uh, oh difficulties to get money and so on why not getting more out of existing companies they need young people and these young people should come to the companies and tell to the companies i come with this asset with this capacity and i can bring your company uh, further and on a new level by applying new uh, knowledge and technology. Then it's up to the company to take that or to disappear. I think we should much more uh, give incentives to young people such that they join already existing companies with the infrastructure and to develop them further. I think there's much more success there. No, it's good to have, uh, I would say, uh, a priority of uh, opinions. Uh, so you, you have a, <laughs> a choice between, uh, I would say, co conflicting, uh, apparently conflicting um, messages. Uh, no, I think uh, you have been, um, I would say, favored by Europe. You should uh, uh, never forget this. Uh, you should uh, develop your business in Europe, in your domain, uh, I agree with uh, Eugène, uh, uh, the US is not the best place because uh, you don't fit with uh, Silicon standards, Silicon Valley standards, uh, but uh, Europe is a better market than China today because uh, in terms of aging, uh, infrastructures are uh, 
I would say, more edging in, in Europe than in China, that's for sure. Uh, and second, because uh, you will give, uh, you will get more money in Europe than China today, because I think the, the market is simply not mature uh, enough. Uh, the next uh, catastrophe uh, causing uh, human casualties will happen either in the US or in Europe, but uh, maybe not today, uh, soon in China. Uh, and uh, third, uh, third advice to you, uh, use uh, what we call the key enabling technologies. So you have to uh, use fashionable technologies. So you have to speak uh, of AI, uh, of uh, lasers, of uh, IoT. Uh, you have to sexy up uh, your innovation. No, not uh, only probabilistic model, mathematical model, and so forth, but uh, you have to put uh, things that um, appeals uh, to customers and, and, uh, and mainly to uh, investors mm? because you have to, so you are a bit different from the common mold of uh, startups. So you have to adapt yourself to uh, uh, attract uh, the attention of uh, investors and uh, most importantly, clients. Mm? 